Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is what I'm planning to feed my newest worm bin. The newest worm bin is what you see right here on the bench. What we've got is some strawberry, some cucumber, as well as some coffee, and that includes the coffee filter. I usually use these coffee filters to show where we last fed. So when we get down into the bin, we'll probably see a coffee filter marking where we last gave these guys their most recent feeding and that most recent feeding occurred 15 days ago now and I did really quickly breeze through the video I prepared of that last check-in and it was cute um, cabbage maybe some coffee I forget but none of the stuff that I had fe fed last time struck me as things that would uh, stick around very long as leftovers so um, yeah, especially 15 days later, you know, it's hard to imagine that we would bump into many, if any, leftovers. So I'm kind of just spreading out this top covering newspaper because besides the food that I came down here prepared with, I've also got a couple replacement top covering sheets of newspaper. It did seem to me even last time, or at least based on the video that I reviewed quickly before coming down here, it did appear to me like this top covering newspaper was pretty beaten up already. Beaten up and eaten up. So I thought it would be due for a replacement. So I figured I would just try to delaminate some of the folded over surfaces. So that to me seems like a pretty generous quantity of bedding to include with the feeding. And here too I believe this would be what remains of the the coffee filter that would have been placed in here as our feeding zone indicator last time. All stuff that'll come right back in when we're ready to apply today's feeding and serve as the the bedding for today's feeding. I've also got just some other random pieces of cardboard and newspaper floating around here I thought I would do away with at the same time and I'm also going to uh, do away with some of these cardboard tubes. And I also thought it might just be fun to shove some of those cucumber peels and strawberry bits into the cardboard tube so that the worms would be kind of required to crawl down into the tubes to access the yummy foods that were given them. This is already one of the, well being the newest of my systems it makes sense that it's subscribing to my latest philosophy or methodology <laughs> on managing my worm bins which is to um, try running the system closer to the at capacity level versus what I had been doing in the past which was to start the systems with a relatively small quantity of material down low and then always over time build up the material for the worms to occupy and live in and it did seem to me like hey why not just utilize more of the space in the system it would give the worms much more room to grow and expand into because when the worms sense available space they have a tendency to try to fill that space with baby worms and I guess just the opposite of that is when they feel cramped they are you know wise enough or somehow capable of managing their numbers and reducing their re, um, reproduction collectively to limit the number of new babies coming on the scene if there's just not enough room or not enough food supply or whatever so it's always interesting to me how that sort of hive mind works in these um, creatures when they somehow manage to behave in ways that correspond to what's best for the for the greater good of the entire community kinda like ants the way they all seem to know their jobs and they all seem to communicate so well with e with each other on divvying out the responsibilities and the work to be done. So uh, I'm not sure if worms are really doing it that way or I mean it does seem that way right? Or it's just an individual sort of thing perhaps not really thinking of it in terms of the collective perhaps as the worm uh, perhaps as the um, as the ants seem to do. I guess the one drawback of running a system closer to being at capacity 
is just the limited amount of space when you do things like I like to do, which is to till things up and dig kind of deep and sort of explore the material in the system. I'll tell you, for a system that's only a month and a half old, 45 days of age, there is a lot of castings in here. <laughs> the system's just, you know, coming along so nicely. And I think that might have something to do with the fact that um, it's a pretty heavily populated system. You know, when I, um, when I launch off my new systems, I always do my best to show the worms that I'm releasing. And even when I'm collecting up the worms prior to releasing them, I do my best to try to um, exhibit what we're dealing with to the viewers in the video so that at the end I can poll the viewers for their input on helping establish an estimate for how many worms occupy the system. And in the case of this system, we have a fairly nice population size, probably one of the more heavily um, populated systems that I've got because um, when we launched off this system with everyone's input we arrived at a, a worm population estimate which is let's see I've got the numbers written down there it's close to 3,000 2,961 worms are thought to occupy this this worm bin I'll bring back this filter to mark where we last fed at the end but I think we're now at the point where we could begin applying the food so like I said I'd like to try something a little different I thought I would start jamming all this yummy food right down into these cardboard tubes and I think the worms would just on their own have a tendency to crawl into these things anyway for whatever reason that's just what I've seen on other worm channels where people put in just an empty tube and when they come back, the thing is loaded with worms without any food ever having been placed in there to lure them in. But I think that here, with a bunch of delicious cucumber and strawberry jammed into the tubes, we're definitely going to find a nice little worm party within each of these tubes the next time we come back in here. Assuming we don't wait too much between now and the next check-in, because I'll admit, 15 days between check-ins is... Um, a bit long in my book. I have a tendency to return to my systems pretty regularly, often not waiting quite that long. And maybe it's just because I've got, you know, kitchen scraps piling up and household waste piling up that I'd like to introduce into the worm bins for composting. Um, I do always have a pretty decent supply. I mean, strawberries, for example, are one of those things that I generally don't buy for here at home. So when I've got strawberry, it's almost guaranteed that that's a contribution from my mom. Now, before we cover up, I'm just wondering, is there anything else that we would want to add in here? It seems like a pretty nice, um, substantial feeding, as well as a pretty substantial quantity of bedding with that piece of newspaper in there, the old feeding zone indicator, these tubes. I think we're in good shape when it comes to this feeding so I think we'll just start back filling here you know now that we've got a little bit of space here in the crevice down the middle I think we'll use that as an opportunity to also examine the outer limits of the system if you're like me and you have this tendency to always kind of feed down the middle it can occasionally happen that you begin to neglect the outskirts of the bin. So I always feel like I'd like to just make sure things in other areas throughout the bin besides the feeding zone are doing well. So I'll usually try to include a little check-in on the outer edges of the systems like we're doing now. Down the middle where we last fed the system was really nice and damp, ample moisture, but out here on the edges, it seems like mixing in some more damp stuff would be beneficial because the material does feel a bit drier. I mean, not dreadfully dry because if it was dreadfully dry, the worms would simply steer clear of it and they would never even be able to go explore that material. But 
here it seemed to me, at least on that edge, um, it did seem like it would benefit a little bit from getting mixed together with some more damp material from elsewhere in the bin. So I did try to combine some more damp materials with what I found down there. And over on this edge, I'm curious if we're going to see something similar. Oops. Oh. <laughs> I just spilled some. That's exactly what I'm referring to when I uh, express concerns about running systems this close to capacity. It just feels like the potential of spilling stuff over the edge is just so um, much greater when you're operating this close to the edge unless you're really careful and vigilant to not allow it to happen it just seems like it could really easily occur and I guess you know I wasn't really gonna sweat it but maybe I should at least verify that I didn't send any little worms <laughs> over the edge it seems like it was only castings and bedding material but I just worried a little bit there that maybe some of the stuff that I spilled was also housing a few worms who would not do well out there on the floor besides me possibly stepping on them I um I imagine things would be a bit dry over there for them and it would probably lead to their end pretty quickly so we didn't leave anything down there as far as wormies go here it seems like the moisture level was a little bit better I did find some dry stuff, but right next to it was some nice damp material. It was loaded with worms. I did not see any um, concentrations of worms in any one spot within this system, so I assume they came in for that yummy cabbage and coffee and the other things that were fed last time 15 days ago. And they probably did away with that, so they've since just been roaming the contents of the bin and cruising around because there's really been probably no one concentration of food anywhere for them to mob around. So it kind of makes me assume that the alternate thing that they would have a tendency to be drawn towards is um, material that has a somewhat higher level of uh, moisture to it. And that would normally be down, down low at the bottom of the bin or sometimes near where you last fed. But I think we're more or less done here. We've taken care of giving these little guys their feeding today. And along with the feeding went a nice new replacement coffee filter to mark where we last fed, as well as a couple nice replacement top covering pieces of newspaper, which as you saw with the old one that we just um, reused down in the feeding area as bedding, the, uh, the top covering has a tendency to get pretty wet when it's right below this piece of plastic where the moisture recirculates and then the worms come up, they take advantage of the moisture, they um, hang out there and at the same time they tend to nibble on that paper. So I think we're more or less done here with our now 45 day old youngest of my worm bins getting its fifth feeding now and um, yeah the feeding we just gave them is also one that I don't expect to last very long. Luckily, there's plenty of bedding in a system like this, so even after the kitchen scraps run out, the system would do just fine for probably many weeks beyond um, the point where they run out of kitchen scraps because they could just keep eating the bedding, you know? All right, everyone, that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.